The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Most holy and righteous God, we give you thanks and praise for the gift of this day. We give you thanks, O oh God, for calling us as a church to be faithful in serving you as Lord and Savior. May our worship of you today be one which affirms this calling so that even as we seek to care for the less fortunate, to provide for the needy, we will remember that in doing all these things, we are also doing them to you. And this we ask through the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The hymn for the procession, 387, 387.
and our service continues on page 101 of the Book of Common Service. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthy magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to you on the earth. Lord God, heaven and King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you. We praise you for your glory, Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Son of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayers, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you are always more ready to hear than we to pray, and to give more than we either desire or deserve. Pour upon us the abundance of your mercy, for giving us those things of which our conscience is afraid, and giving us those good things for which we are not worthy to ask. Except through the merits and mediation of Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. and the mountain smoking, 
they were afraid and trembled and stood at a distance and said to Moses, you speak to us and we listen, but do not let God speak to us or we will die. Moses said to the people, do not be afraid, for God has come only to test you and to put the fear of him upon you so that you do not sin. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 19, which can be found on page 490. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament shows his heavenly word. One day tells his tale to another. And one night depart of knowledge to another. Although they have no words or, or language, and their voices are not heard, their sound has gone out into all lands, and, and their message to the ends of the world. In the deep has he set a pavilion for his son. It comes forth like a bridegroom out of his chamber. It rejoices like a champion. It goes forth from the uttermost edge of the heavens and runs about to the end of its advent. Nothing is hidden from his burning heat. The law of the Lord is perfect and revives the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure and gives wisdom to the innocent. The statutes of the Lord are just and rejoice the heart. The commandment of the Lord is here and gives you the light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. Nor to be desired are they than gold, more, more than much to sign the gold. These are far than the money, but than money is the gold. By them also is your servant. And lightning. And he gives them their great reward. Who can tell how often he offends? Bless me for my secret thoughts. Above all, keep your servant from presumptuous things. Let them not get dominion over me. Then shall I be bold and strong, and let me shall set a greater greatness. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart. Be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, now and shall be forever. Amen. Not having a righteousness of my own 
that comes from the law, but one that comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God based on faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his suffering by becoming like him in his death. If somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead, not that I have already obtained this or have already reached the goal, but I press on to make it my own, because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Philip, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straying forward to what lies ahead. I press on toward the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. 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 
Jesus entered the temple. We see in Matthew chapter 2, verses 23 to 27, where the chief priests and the elders, they had questioned the authority of Jesus, refusing to give them an answer as to who was the authority he was teaching and feeding people in. Jesus told them three parts. The first being the parable of the two sons, which we heard last week. The second, we heard today, the parable of the wicked tenants, which is our focus, my friends, in reflecting on the responsibility that we have in spreading God's love among God's people. And the third being the parable of the wedding banquet. In the parable of the wicked tenant, Matthew 21, verses 33 to 46, Jesus told them about this landowner who planted a vineyard. He put a fence around it, he got a wine press in it, and he built a watchtower. The landowner then leased it to tenants and went away to another country. With the land owner, my friends, representing God in this parable, and the tenants representing the spiritual leaders, those whom God has appointed to tend and care for the vineyard. Those, my friends, whom God has placed on earth, 
be looked after by us. Persons who should receive God's care, God's love. Persons who we should be feeding when they are hungry and offering support. One can see that the clear message that Jesus was giving these, these Pharisees and scribes and other elders of the church is that look here, if you fail to care for these people, you will face the consequences. So when the landowner sent his servants, when the time had come for the harvest, the time to give an account of what they had done. What did they do? We see in this text where they, where they seized them. They beat and killed and stoned them. A vivid reminder to these Jewish leaders of how God had tried it through history via prophets to provide the guidance that they need to faithfully care for God's people. But they ignored them. And what did they do to some of them? They killed them. How many of us remember that story of Elijah in 1 Kings, in which Elijah had to go into hiding because the Israelites were killing off the prophets who were doing God's work? To show God's faithfulness, he sent other servants, prophets after prophets, but they just would not listen. And they treated them in the same regard. Consequently, we see in verse 37 that the landowner, who represents God, finally decided to send his son, his beloved son, believing that they would respect the son. But what did they do when they saw him? The tenants in this parable seized him. They killed him. And they threw him out of the vineyard. A prediction and a demonstration of what these Jewish leaders were going to do to Jesus himself. Jesus then continued in verse, verse 40 rather to explain what will happen to these wretched tenants. Now, when the owner of the vineyard comes, Jesus said, What will he do to these tenants? The Pharisees and the other Jewish leaders, not realizing that Jesus was telling this parable against them, confidently responded, He will put those wretches to a miserable death and leave the vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce at the harvest time. Jesus then stated in verses 42 to 43, the stone the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. Therefore I tell you, he continued, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and be given to a people that produces the fruit of the kingdom. So the question, my brothers and sisters, are we ensuring through our lives, the lives that we live, that we really love and have accepted Jesus in our daily lives as our Lord and Savior by the way that we treat others? Are we ensuring that our lives are bearing fruit by appearing for others and offering love and support where needed? Just as the Jewish leaders have a responsibility to care for the vulnerable in society, so it is that the church who are God's hands and God's feet has a responsibility to ensure that the hungry are fed, the sick are healed, the lonely and the bereaved are encouraged. And we must also remember, my friends, the need to be hospitable to strangers. Our oh, failure to do these things will result in God's kingdom being taken away from us and given to others 
who are bearing fruits of the kingdom of God. During this COVID-19 pandemic, how many of us have really taken the time out to ensure that we offer help to persons who are in need? Persons who are hungry. Persons who would normally go out and work a dollar a day and now are not working. In what ways have we as members of church and even other members of society ensured about the well-being of those now who we know are struggling? Have we been intentional <clears throat> in getting food stuff, even money towards the outreach ministries of our churches, so that the church can effectively carry out its mission of evangelizing and providing for the needy in society? Are we calling those who live alone just to check up on them to see how they are doing? To offer support. My friends, have we been reaching out towards schools? We hear that schools are trying to reopen. Even amidst this COVID 19 pandemic. In what ways have we, as a church, been reaching out towards schools that are connected to us? Are we availing ourselves to say, look here? Let us see what we can do so that school can effectively reopen. We hear about the internet issue. In what way or ways can we as church seek to facilitate the effective and efficient reopening of our schools? What about providing some masks for our children? How can we, even amidst this COVID 19 pandemic, still play a role as Christians, as God's people? To ensure that these little ones are taken. We are God's hands and God's feet, my brothers and sisters. And so I want to challenge us today to take this calling seriously. I want to challenge us today to remember that even as we do these things, we're not doing them only to the people to whom we are ministering to. We are also doing them unto Almighty God. And so some of us use the time card, don't it? Well, guess what? Always remember that there is always someone who is in a worse situation than you are. Our failure, my friends, as the text reminds us, to reach out to God's people will result in the kingdom of God being taken away from us. Count your many blessings, name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord has done. So no matter how small you say your mercies are, no matter how small whatever money it is that you may say you have, always remember, my friends, that there are persons who have greater needs. Let us therefore ensure that we seek to take these roles as Christians very seriously so that others can come to experience the kingdom of God through us as God's beloved followers. Let us be real. Let us be compassionate. Let us, my friends, be motivated from a heart of love and tend to God's vineyard so that on that great and glorious day of harvest, God can say to us, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Come and inherit the kingdom which has been prepared for you.
page 104. Let us stand as we affirm our faith in the words of the 19th Your response will be and the power of his resurrection. We pray for the, the church that is under persecution, the church at work, in danger, in dark city. We pray for churches that have lost their religion for all who will see bring the life of Christ to others. That we all may grow in holiness and in the outreach. We pray especially for our leaders, for Justin as Bishop of Canterbury, Howard Diocesan Bishop and Archbishop of the West Indies, Robert and Leon Sacristan Bishop, Winston Menardo and Orlando, and to all others who hold office in your church, that we may know Christ and the power of his resurrection. We pray for Patrick, the Governor General, and the Prime Minister, Peter, Leader of Opposition, and all members of Parliament, the Senate, Councillors, and the leaders. We pray for all who are struggling for survival. We pray for those whose lives have collapsed around them. We remember those who have lost loved ones. Possessing possessions, homes, or work this week. All who have been robbed or stripped of their dignity. Those sleeping in the streets of our city. All who have lost hope or will power that we may know Christ all and the power of his resurrection. resurrection. We, pray for we pray that our homes may be places of peace and light, that our relationships may reflect joy and love, that our faith may fill our homes and our actions, that we may work for peace and unity, 
by the one spirit we are all baptized into one body and have all been made to drink of the one spirit. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.
This bread, this wine, this morning, we thank you all for ourselves, for our lives, and our work. We come to the Holy Spirit, a reason of the Holy and the land of sacrifice, and as this bread and wine become the body and blood of Christ, so we be and all your people become channels of your love, to the same Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And the Lord is so with you. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing. Always and everywhere to give you thanks for our almighty, everlasting God. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image. And call us to new life in Jesus Christ, O oh Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. <laughs>
a continual intercession for us in heaven. And looking for his coming again in glory. Long way in time feeling. The soul is the life of <laughs> sacrifice. Look with favor on the church's offering. And grant that we will eat and drink this holy gifts. May we fill with your Holy Spirit and become one body in Christ and serve in unity, constancy, and peace. May he make us a perpetual offering to you, and he may not in communion with Blessed Mary, Blessed Paul, and the whole company of heaven to share in the inheritance of your saints. With him and in him and through him, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we worship you, Father Almighty. We all stand before you in earth and heaven in songs of our last being free.
God be with you. Also with you. Go in peace, the Lord, and serve the Lord. Amen. Amen.